Is that better? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Have to do that whole thing again? I don't know where I've gone. Where have I gone? Can you hear me? <laughs> Shall we start again? <laughs> now my camera's gone. I'm not winning. <laughs> oh, it's saying it's, now it's saying my camera's unplugged. <laughs> Hello, can anybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? <laughs> All right, we'll go to this one. Oh dear. All right, we'll try this camera. Hello? Nope, my cameras aren't. You can hear me now? Cool. All right. It looks like my cameras aren't going to work, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, I don't. I think. I think. I think. There we go. Yay! <laughs> How are you all? All right, well, welcome. So let me take that back. So welcome back to my channel. <laughs> We've got quite a bit to talk about. We want to update to court with Friendly Geordies. Um, there's, there has been, uh, we've got Stuart Ayers of ICAC. That was interesting. We want to talk about Alec Baldwin and the accident that occurred on set. And we've got some small snippets of Katie Joy which I know that some people like and some people don't, and we'll put her at the end. Um, uh, she actually got really upset because she was talking about the topic and people talked about Alec Baldwin, and she actually snapped to her chat for not talking about what, for not being on the topic that she was talking about. So we know that in here you can talk about whatever you like. I talk about whatever I like. They don't have to be at the same time <laughs> we don't even have to yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it's a pretty relaxed full I'm just gonna have the rules come up in a minute pro have my Miami vice <laughs> hey Peter how are you so there's the rules So that's all we've got to do. Hello, short order cook. How are you? So I want to look at uh, what's happening with Cleo because she's still not found. Uh, it's becoming uh, those rules are for Scoma. <laughs> so the lead. <laughs> Good, I had to take some time, but catching up with Everett. Cool, I'm glad. Um, yeah, I'm doing really well. I'm doing really well. Some of the problems that I've been talking about, for those of you that are members, where I asked you a few questions, are still rearing their, their little heads with phone calls, particularly now that I'm actually going to other people for coffee, that somebody's now interested. It's funny. But anyway, it's, uh, yeah, life is, uh, let's just say, <laughs> since, I said that, since I sent the email thanking them for breaking my heart and making me a better, stronger person, I've had three job, I've had three job offers <laughs> and uh, numerous uh, requests for coffee. And one of the places that I'm working at, <laughs> one of the places, uh, one of the places that I'm working at, um, at about seven, Seven o'clock, all the young guys come in and they're called young guns. And one of them has actually tried tried to hit on me. It's really bizarre. I said to them, I'm an old gun. I said, I'm not a young gun. And you know, and they go, Oh, so you know, this whole changing my mindset and having to pick myself up um, and having to uh, yeah, pick myself up, it has it has done wonders. Uh, Peter, I did, but then their ex came, then their ex told them that they missed them and they decided that, um, they decided to go back to their ex, despite the fact that they had declared their undying love for me. And, uh, I was told today that, um, 
<laughs> um, I was told, I was told again today that she has told, she hasn't said that she loves him and he doesn't know where it's going to go. And I said, mate, your problem, not mine. <laughs> it's not my problem. <laughs> yes, I had, Peter. You missed all of that. <laughs> then I was heartbroken. <laughs> And now I'm just trying to fend off everybody. <laughs> I know. In fact, I got a text message the other day. I got a text message the other day to say I will always love you. <laughs> um, yeah, I will always love you. <laughs> I wanted to go, and, oh. <laughs> and then I got told that I missed. And apparently the only way that he can get intimate with the current partner is to think of me, apparently. So I don't know, I don't know how flattering that is. <laughs> so I don't know how I would feel if I was her to find out that... <laughs> For him to get excited, he's not thinking about her, he's thinking about me. <laughs> that That's a bit freaky myself. <laughs> I think deep down he knows he's stuffed up. <laughs> I think deep down he knows, but anyway. <sighs> Every Monday... <laughs> <laughs> That's what they, uh, they they spend the weekend together because they only see each other on the weekend. Every Monday he asks, what does he have to do to come back to me? <laughs> uh, shall I shall I send her the link? She'll order cook. Or would like would someone like to <laughs> would someone like to send her the link? <laughs> I found her on Facebook. <laughs> Um, and so if you're watching this, hello. <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> but I had a, yeah, I did, I did speak briefly today, but it was about, there was, there was um, an inquiry into the people I were meeting and uh, whether they were suitable for me. And I said, what's it to you? <laughs> He does. <laughs> and apparently, so apparently now he can't see me or talk to me because both my voice and my my look turns him on. So anyway, it's fine. <laughs> I just love. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, yeah. uh. <laughs> anyway, so as I said, it's been it's very, very, very interesting. So um yeah. I did present with him a three page <laughs> requirement list. <laughs> of what would need to happen for me to even consider going back <laughs> to even I said to consider not that it would happen to consider <laughs> <Three pages. laughs> oh, so if anyone would like to sneakily drop the link to this <laughs> Dear me, oh, that's funny. Oh. <laughs> yeah, three pages. <laughs> oh, 
dear. <laughs> they can't help to. You can say whatever you like, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> oh really <laughs> you you like, well we're not in lockdown either now apparently <laughs> so anyway <laughs> what are we talking about <laughs> my non-existent love life rufus <laughs> No, apparently how um, I now that I'm actually uh, confident and somebody wants back in. <laughs> anyway. oh, that's what we're talking about. Anyway, so as I said, because my self-esteem has picked up and everything like that, as I said, I've got jobs and now I've got all these I've got um, three or four guys I'm meeting for coffee in the next week or so. <laughs> oh, look, Laura, I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> that was about, I think it's been about five weeks. I've had a few of those days, even now. Um, I even had to put my foot down and say, I'm not, don't, don't even mention about uh asking me what would need to happen to come back gave him the three pages and said these are it talk to me when you i won't talk to you uh until that relationship's over so <sighs> but um i believe that <laughs> And I said, oh, you're spending the weekend together. And he goes, oh, I don't know. She hasn't told me yet. I went, okay. <laughs> oh. oh, look, Rufus, 13 years. This was the first guy I'd been out with since I was, since my marriage broke up. So I was a bit, I guess I was a bit naive. <laughs> Because, you know, but anyway, I've learned, and unfortunately for all the other guys, uh, the guard's up and, yeah, I'm on my, I'm on my toes. <laughs> they're, they're just, uh, you know, I'm. <laughs> It'd be, <laughs> hey. It'd be funny. Hello, if you're both watching. <laughs> Imagine if they're watching this. <laughs> oh, anyway. All right. So let's start off with our. With our. As I said, I know I found I found the person on. Um, said person on Facebook so um and uh I know exactly how it's going I've so or not going <laughs> but you know as I said I don't really care but anyway let's start off with the let's follow up so we said I did a live today about friendly daughters and the fact that the police have had to pay his court fees because but there's been a little bit extra added to that. So let me just pull this up here. Uh, that is true, Laura. That is true. <laughs> and don't forget, this person did break up with him twice already, the person that he chose. <laughs> All right. So the lie this morning is that They've got to pay, the police have to pay the court over more than $20,000 for court costs for Jordan Shanks and Christo Lanka. So they've got to pay Shanks's legal fees of $19,250 and Mr. Lanka's cost of $2,772. 
You know how we're talking about Harold Hotson said uh, you hear Morrison wants so bad. <laughs> Or is it the Barillaro family? <laughs> so, so then we had, so then we had, um, <laughs> so we finished here where she said she would consider a warrant. So one of Miss Hamblin's solicitors, um, Jacob Rogers, appeared in court several hours after the hearing began and apologised reservedly on his client's behalf, he said he believed that she had complied with the subpoena. Well, he obviously didn't follow up to see that she had. I'd be very interested to hear what your idea of compliance is, Miss Millage said. The discourtesy that's been shown to the court by Miss Hamlin's lawyers is, to me, immeasurable. So she's ripped in. <laughs> she has ripped into the lawyer. <laughs> you've, you've put her in a terrible position where I could in a moment Issue a warrant for her arrest. Shame on your firm for allowing it to go this way. Wow, she's ripped into the lawyer. Uh, Miss Millage said the prospect of Miss Hamlin being found in contempt is a live issue. She ordered Miss Hamlin to attend court next Wednesday week to be cross-examined about her reaction to the subpoena. This is this is not over. Bras has now put his ex. Chief of Staff in the poo. The magistrate described the actions of those behind the Friendly Geordie's channel as rude and abrasive and childish and stupid jabber. And she said she was weighing up with the issue of the warrant. So it's about, so, and then she said she doesn't condone or support the use of social media to belittle, to try and disgrace an individual and does not support when social media is trying to try and degrade somebody. It's time Parliament decided this type of abuse, online abuse, something has to be done, Miss Millage said, but it's not up to the courts to fix these problems. The court returns, the matter returns to court next week. So, <laughs> chat's just gone. Chat's just, <laughs> you're in your own little world. <laughs> so, the judge absolutely tore shreds off the lawyer for Miss Hamblin so she's going to appear now and explain to the judge why she didn't comply So, so the saga continues. There'll be more court fees next week because next week, when they, when they go back to court, it's all over this subpoena. It's got nothing. It's got nothing to do with friendly Geordies at the moment. That's all gone. So, the police force now. Uh, has to find twenty thousand dollars. New South Wales. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. <laughs> it's you just wouldn't um it's just something you can't explain really. <laughs> and uh let's have a look at what happened in ICAT today. Stuart Ayers faced ICAT today. <laughs> And uh, he's living in his own little bit of a dream world, it would seem, because he believes, despite all everybody that's testified so far in ICAC have said that the project had no no merit. <laughs> well, Braz has to face ICAC on uh, Monday. I, I think he's um, Braz has to um, face ICAC next week. He can't go anywhere. So Stuart Ayers tells ICAC, that the that the project had lots of merit. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's no good, Cal. So let's watch this. Let's watch this little snippet from the ICAC. All right, this is thirty six seconds worth. Yeah. 
if my computer will cooperate because it's not liking it. It doesn't want to play it. <laughs> oh, dear me. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, play. Yeah, the most important factor about this project proceeding is that I determine it has merit. Well, that's really what I'm trying to focus on. To, uh, you're really saying this if you if you if you had an opportunity to answer that previous question again, Mr. Maguire's support might not be number one; it might be somewhere else on the list. Yeah, that's correct. But my emphasis on this project was I thought it had merit. I thought it played the project itself had merit. I thought it played an important role for this particular sporting organisation. Its regional location was attractive to me as well, and it had the strong support from the local member. Okay, so that's what Stuart Ayres said. Now, Stuart Ayres is now the Deputy Leader of New South Wales Liberals. So since uh, there's been a new Premier, Perrottet, hey? he's now the Deputy Leader. So he told the state's corruption watchdog a million-dollar project pushed by Gladys Berejiklian's and secret MP boyfriend had a lot of merit. merit. <laughs> so... So he was the minister in 2014, said Mr Maguire made repeated representations to him about the shooting club proposal beginning from the early days of his time in the role. In January 2016, a letter to Mr Ayres, Mr Maguire said he'd approached then-treasurer Ms Berejiklian about the project and Mr Ayres considered it pretty standard. In March that year, Mr Ayres wrote back saying there was no funding sources available but he had also visited the site. I thought the project had a lot of merit, he told the Commission. Part of the reason, he said, <laughs> was an upcoming World Championship in 2018. The proposal was identified as a strategic project when there were was an un underspend at the end of the financial year. I thought it played an important role for this particular sporting organisation. Its regional location was attractive to me as well and it had strong support from the local member. Pressed with the support of Mr Maguire, was significant, Mr Ayres said he was not seeing him different to anyone else as a local MP advocating for their electorate. He also dismissed suggestions there were political considerations at play. He said he definitely wasn't thinking about the potential to counteract the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party in the regions because Wagga was a safe Liberal seat. If it had strong financial merit around it, I would have been proceeding with it. Mr Ayres approved $40,000 to fund a business case project in mid-2016. I needed greater research or a business case behind it to take the project forward. Mr Ayres described the business case as of September 2016 as strong and the validation I was looking for because it illustrated the project's benefit outweighed its cost. But he, re he regarded its main benefit versus cost measurement being optimistic. His office requested bureaucrats urgently prepare material for proposal to go to before Cabinet's Expenditure Review Committee then chaired by Ms. Berejiklian. Ms. Ayres said the urgency was due to the construction timeline given the World Championship had been secured for 2018. The, the inquiry had previously heard a, strat a strategist for then Premier M Mike Baird, a memo in December 2016 recommending the proposal be opposed at the committee meeting, noting that there had likely been a sweetheart deal between Ms. Berejiklian, Mr. Ayres and Mr. Maguire. Whoopsies! <laughs> <laughs> so one of the one of the people working one of the um bureaucrats said that he had that they the department had actually opposed it but they believed that there was some sweetheart deal which meant there was some deal between these people council assisting the commission scott robertson asked mr ayres if he had any particular arrangement or deal with the pair no he replied mr ayres said he couldn't recall <laughs> Any specific contact with Ms. Berejiklian about, <laughs> about the committee submission. However, it was possible through the normal course of interactions between a minister and treasurer. The watchdog had previously heard the business case was regarded by senior bureaucrats as insufficient and inadequate. Isn't it interesting that all the bureaucrats are saying it's inefficient and inadequate and Mr. Ayres, who was the minister at the time, saying, oh, no, it had merit. <laughs> so the hearing continues. He also... Um, stated, which is not reported in this one, that 
if he had known, if he'd known about the relationship, it may have changed things. Everyone is saying that the relationship should have been declared because of the it, it brought across about a conflict of interest. This isn't. <laughs> yeah, couldn't recall. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's how that's happened. So all the bureaucrats, uh, all the bureaucrats said it had no merit and you've got Stuart Ayres saying it had merit. Mm. I haven't heard if Perrottet has been called in, but they're, they're talking about he could be implicated in some way as well. How many, how many other politicians, how many other New South Wales politicians are going to going to get caught up in this? I wonder. How many? How many more? Well, we were just talking about. Uh, okay. How many more people? So I've heard Parrot. I've heard Parrotay could be um, called in. A whole lot of them. <laughs> well, you see why the feds don't want a um, ICAT? Oh, Got to watch a video by Michael West. Got to watch this. This was shocking, actually. <laughs> because I found out why the libs probably the blind trust uh blocked the investigation into the blind trust michael west media has actually <laughs> has uncovered something because dutton wants to set up, set up a fund <laughs> here he is here's michael west media if you haven't subscribed have go and subscribe because he again is independent and he's not afraid to have a, let's have a watch of this. This was shocking. This will shock you. Dutton wants you to pay for MPs' defamation suits. Remember, remember, Dutton's suing somebody already. <laughs> he's And he's also jealous because um, Dutton's also probably jealous because Porto got the brown paper bag full of money <laughs> from the blind trust. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, let's have a look at this. Poor, poor, poor Peter Dutton. <laughs> poor and Dutton, uh, poor Peter, poor is not a phrase I would use <laughs> to describe Peter Dutton. <laughs> he wants to set up. Let's go back again. Oops, oops. <laughs> Full screen. Okay. Poor, poor, poor Peter Dutton. He wants to set up a fighting fund, a defamation fund, funded by us so that he can sue people who hurt his feelings. <laughs> so that he can get free legal fees and run around and sue all his critics. We are going to sue. Let's 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 take that back. <sighs> I wish my computer would um work a bit faster. Poor poor Peter Dutton. <laughs> All right. Oh dear. All right. All right. Hello, Wizardettes. All right. Let's go with this. Let's go back to here again. We gotta play that again. That was classic. And sue people who hurt his feelings, so that he can get free legal fees and run round and sue all his critics. We are gonna sue you. We'll sue you, buddy. We are gonna sue your ass and your balls. You are so sued. <laughs> you are so sued. <laughs> I mean, what a one-way street this is. The PM can smash Australia Post's Christine Holgate, force her out of a job. His critics. 
Oh, sorry, I don't know what's going on here. My computer has decided not to cooperate. So remember, Christine Holgate. And and also, don't forget, because I know that people have said to me about Sam Dastiari. Sam Dastiari had to resign over thousands, not mil but we're talking about millions with Porter. And we've got the Cartier watch scandal. Yeah. All right. You can smash Australia Post's Christine Holgate, force her out of a job. She can't sue him for defamation. doesn't matter what he says because parliamentarians have the cover of parliamentary privilege. And when they're in the chamber... Says Joyce and his political colleagues also need to lead by example. Sadly, too many politicians are the past masters of leaking malicious rumours out of their offices as well as using their position to spread misinformation and misuse parliamentary privilege to destroy reputations. They can say whatever they like. Was he, um, yeah, Morrison um, was not very nice to Christine Holgate in Parliament. Anyone. Yet they want us to fund a special fighting fund so that they can run around suing their critics, get taxpayers to finance their legal actions. <laughs> Peter Dutton has suggested legal fund using taxpayers' money that MPs can use to pursue defamation claims as workplace entitlement. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, dear me. How good are stupid ideas? <laughs> <laughs> How good are stupid ideas? <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor order cook. Poor, poor Peter Dutton lost his hair when he slipped on a button. Found it in the bin next day. He was badly chewed. So he threw it away. <laughs> Is that like? Pin that. I need to find my other device and pin it. <laughs> my mods can't pin, can they? <laughs> Australia, we have the most draconian defamation mm -hmm. laws in the world. They don't have them in America. You've got to prove malice. You've got to prove personal malice. You can't just, you know, sue somebody because you've got hurt feelings. But Peter. <laughs> wants to set up a fund for politicians to sue their critics if somebody says something mean. And <laughs> wants to sue for hurt feelings. <laughs> I'm assuming he found his hair in the bin and not the button. <laughs> Nasty. Clearly, he was not taught in his early childhood. Sticks and stones will break my bones. But names will never hurt. The guys in Canberra are doing their best to protect the powerful from the powerless. A minister in the coalition government, the supposed champions of free speech, want the freedom. That in those most basic freedoms of parliamentary democracy, the freedom of thought, worship, speech, and association. Apparently, that's the Liberal Party's belief system. Ask the taxpayers to pay for their legal actions in the case that they get hurt feelings. And don't forget, and in the case where they sue the national broadcaster, we pay twice. Wonderful idea. The Maddies on Sky telling all the lefties and the progressives to harden up, to cop a bit of criticism, to be able to accept a joke. Free speech, free speech, they cry. Where are they now when one of their own, their champion, Peter Dutton, 
gets hurt feelings. Already Peter Dutton is suing the refugee advocate Shane Barzi for a tweet. He's already attacking social media. Christian Porter, former Attorney General, suing the ABC. John Barillaro, suing Friendly Geordies. Hurt feelings again. Hurt Andrew feelings Lamming, again. threatening people. They're already using the defamation laws, but despite their salaries, the Ministerial... So here we go. Look at this. Christian Porter. Leader of the House, he was on $369,690. Alan Tudge, $364. David Littleproud, wow, really? Real salary of $350,000 a year before the $200 daily allowance and so on, all the other perks, and now they want us to fund their defamation actions for them. There is only one winner. And that's the lawyers. There you go. What do you reckon? Talking about Julian Hill, he had a really good video out on Twitter about the cashless debit card. Let me find that. Um, because he's got a bill going in on Monday to ban it, which it needs to happen, I have to tell you. As somebody that has had to uh, deal with people on the oh, – yeah, here we go. Uh, 10 hours ago. Here we go. Let's watch this one. This is Julian Hill. Oops. Well, it is disappointing, but I do really thank you for your time. All week. I've been trying to sign up for Scott Morrison's cashless welfare card. Um, I've been on the phone to Centrelink, to Indu, the private company that runs this card for the government. People are always saying, if the card's so good, why don't MPs go on it? And I thought, all right, I'll put my money where my mouth is. I'll sign up and see what it's about. It's interesting. He was going to sign up. He's trying to sign up for the cashless debit card. <laughs> He's trying to sign up for it. I'll just take that back a bit so that you can just fully grasp this. So this is a politician on, I don't know, what would it be, on 100,000, 200,000, talking about signing up for the cashless debit card so that 80% um, of his salary will go on the card because that's what happens. 80% goes on the card, the rest goes into your account. Oh, it's 200k minimum? Wow. I need to become a politician. But I can see, I see some people do need, I do think some people need to be on, on money management and I, I, but the problem that I've got is that um, it's managed, it's privatised. And so when somebody rings up with a problem, you actually can't do anything as Department of Services uh, can't do it. If you need money management, I think it's, it's really good, but you should not be forced to be on it. And I know that people need help with money sometimes. Yeah, I, look, if if I think if you go to, if you, through a financial counsellor, decide that you need to have, oh, are they getting upset? Are they, Cal? Um, if, if I think to, in order to be on it or to have your money um, managed, I think you have to have seen a financial counsellor. I think you, it has to be something that's, that's decided between a financial counsellor and yourself and I think then it should be volunt it should be voluntary. But see I don't understand why they've got the injury card when they've got the basics card. And the basics card is Centrelink run and it's very versatile. I mean for a lot of people they get everything paid for them. You know, like out of their 
income managed account. I tried to get a friend on basis. Basis cards a lot, a lot better. It is a lot more flexible, in my opinion. If your time. Ooh. All week, mm -hmm. I've been trying to sign up for Scott Morrison's cashless welfare card. I've been on the phone to Centrelink to Inju, the private company. <laughs> He's been on the phone to Centrelink. <laughs> you hate your family, Kel? That's my good. That runs this card for the government. People are always saying, if the card's so good, mm. why don't MPs go on? The difference between the basics card and, and the cashless debit card is that Centrelink controls the basics card. They can actually... Um, they can actually fix all the problems. With Indu, you can't. They they can't do anything. They can't set up de um, debit uh, direct debits for it or anything. With the basics card or the income management account, Centrelink actually has control over how it's done and if there's a mistake, they can fix it. But you can't do it on the Indu card. Only Indu can do that. Even if they want to set up direct debits to come out to pay stuff, uh, I uh, the basics card was a lot easier and uh but yeah and i thought all right i'll put my money where my mouth is i'll sign up and see what it's about i've heard so many horror stories from people right across the country who've been forced onto this privatized card not being able to get enough money out to buy cheap food at the market or secondhand goods or have a meal at the rsl give money to the grandkids the story of a woman heartbreaking she told the senate committee she was forced to ring this private company to beg for permission to go and shop at a shop to buy a bra. To, it wasn't an approved shop. And that's where it starts. Indu base. Yeah. So the basic, yeah, the government has more control of the basics card, essentially. And that's really, you can't, you can't even use Australia Post. See, that's what sucks. <laughs> You really do hate your family? Oh, no. Scott Morrison's been telling Australians for years that this card's fantastic, it's good, it's going to help everyone, all Australians are going to benefit, anyone can sign up. If he wins the election, he wants to roll it out and force all age pensioners and everyone receiving a social security payment onto this card. 80% of your income, 80% of your payment would be taken and put on this card controlled by the private company. What I've just discovered is sneakily in the last few months, they've quietly changed the rule. So previously you said everyone can go on it. Now they're running scared because people are cottoning on to their plan. No one wants to be forced onto this private card. What are they trying to hide? They don't want people to know how bad it is before the election. Isn't that interesting? The rules are being changed. They do that a lot. They, they will slightly change rules, hoping nobody notices. This is privatised welfare. The government has spent more than $70 million on this contract with Indu. It's the only contract that the Department of Social Services has kept secret, the only one. That's more than $5,200 for every card that's been issued. That's more than some part pensioners get in an entire year. It's wasteful. I mean, this government, with their tens of billions of dollars of rorts and waste, telling anyone, let alone pensioners, how to spend their own money is offensive. The government wants to control how people spend their own money. Now, next week in Parliament, I'm introducing a bill to scrap this scheme once and for all. Enough is enough. It'll mean the scheme is gone for everyone currently on the card and it'll protect pensioners and other Australians from ever being forced onto this card. It's going to be up to the government, though, to allow a vote on the bill. Now, some Liberals say don't really support the scheme, but Scott Morrison bullied them into voting for it. It's about time they said the same thing in Canberra that they say in their electorates. They can front up next week and vote for my bill and end this cruel scheme once and for all. Did he just say that some LNP people said that um, Morrison's a bully? I've, I, I, I'd like to take Morrison on. I reckon he's I'd go, what's new, pussycat? <laughs> Nobody wants to know. Oh, no, that's sorry to hear that, cow.
Well, well, we're interested. We're here to support. If you need help, Clive and Kelly are always going to go. Actually, I was, oh, where was I? I was driving somewhere today. Oh, that's right. I was driving home from uh, my work, driving home from work today. And I saw a, a, a United, a Palmer United. Yeah, I know that you swap Peter. Well, I know you swap Peter. Um, I saw a Palmer United ad on a billboard. <laughs> So, that's nation. <laughs> really? I don't, I wouldn't have thought, I'd just laugh at him if he, like, was, <laughs> I reckon I'd just laugh at him because <laughs> that's what I do now when I see him getting worked up in Parliament, I just laugh at him. <laughs> All right, see ya. I'll see you, Cal. <laughs> I would just laugh at ScoMo and go, oh, really, is that the best that you can do? <laughs> <sighs> All right, while we're still doing this, I found this article. This is hilarious. Candace Owens, we've heard that name before. Have we heard of Candace Owens before? <laughs> is she one of the ones KJ had an argument with? <laughs> Let's look what she's got to say. Can't conservative host Candace Owens calls for US to invade Australia to free people from the tyranny. <laughs> a US commentator has gone on a tirade against Australia's tyrannical COVID restrictions and suggested the US should send in the troops. <laughs> A conservative US commentator has suggested America should invade <laughs> to liberate Australians from tyrannical COVID-19 restrictions likely in the country to the early stages of a dictatorship under Hitler or Stalin. <laughs> Daily Wire host, host Candace Owens made the provocative comments in her Tuesday show saying that her husband has family members in Australia one of whom recently shared the mental state of everybody around her was in steep decline. <laughs> she shared with him um, she shared with him a message that she'd received from a friend of hers, a woman who lives in Queensland, and the message is generally shocking, she said. Um, <laughs> but Queensland would be free. <laughs> I read this message and I decided that for this episode... <laughs> <laughs> I know she's I don't know so she shared a message message that she received from a friend of hers a woman who land and the message is generally shocking I was shocked reading this message I decided that for this episode I'm going to read it verbatim it's a list of COVID rules that Australian citizens are being made to follow as I read this I want you to close your eyes and imagine that this was your life and what your mental state would be if you were made to abide by these rules. <laughs> Owens then read a long list of COVID-19 restrictions have been put in place in various times during the pandemic, including household visitor limits, funeral caps, QR code check-ins, literally everywhere, including toilets. <laughs> <laughs> curfews and travel restrictions there are helicopters patrolling the skies to ensure i ensure everyone is abiding by the curfew she said apparently referring to viral footage from sydney's eastern suburbs early this year you're not allowed to sit down at parts <laughs> Um, you're not allowed to sit down at parks, beaches or public spaces. 
You're not allowed to drink or eat while standing up anywhere. No dancing anywhere. Only one person per household is allowed to go shopping for essentials. Only essential shopping is allowed at times. So the Defence Force and Police have checked what people are shopping for. Really? <laughs> Dog parks, playgrounds, bike. <laughs> Mask wearing is required when outside, even if you're alone. I think I the QR yeah, but I think she was talking about I I don't know what to, it was just the way she wrote it. Owen said the thing that shocked her the most was that people being locked out of their own states. <laughs> Thousands of them are not allowed to return unless they get a vaccine, only after they go through a slow and restrictive exemption request process. This is what's going on right now in Australia. Owens then questioned why America shouldn't invade Australia like Afghanistan. <laughs> For the last 20 years, the United States has spent trillions of dollars overseas in Afghanistan fighting a war which we lost, by the way, she said. <laughs> We were told the war was necessary anyway, the slaughtering of American sons and daughters on foreign soil because we were fighting a noble cause to spread democracy in a tyrannical land, to free the oppressed people. So I'm going to ask the same lecturing politicians and media members a question. When do we deploy <laughs> troops to Australia? When do we invade Australia and free and oppress people? <laughs> Who are suffering under a totalitarian regime? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wonder whether they found Coffee Cup Girl. <laughs> I wonder if they found Coffee Cup Girl in their, in their thing. So when do we invade Australia and free and oppress people who are suffering under, under a totalitarian regime? <laughs> when do we spend trillions of dollars to spread democracy to Australia? Owens claimed Australia was currently a tyrannical police state that was stripping away the most basic individual freedoms. <laughs> with citizens quite literally being imprisoned against their will and unable to leave the country. <laughs> what is happening in Australia under the guise of this virus is a federal overreach. <laughs> Tyranny, total totalitarianism, total, total I can't even say the word, and that kind gives birth to evil dictatorships and human atrocity. We are watching a replay of the early ambitions of Joseph Stalin, Adolf Hitler, <laughs> Fidel Castro and Hugo Chavez. Australia was one of the key US partners during the 20-year war in Afghanistan. Um, more than 39,000 Australian soldiers deployed, 41 were killed and more than 260 wounded. <laughs> Um, the U.S. was widely criticised by its allies for an abrupt and botched withdrawal in August that saw the Afghan army collapse to a resurgent Taliban, which quickly overtook control of the country. Can anyone explain to me why the Australian government is any better or more nobler than the Taliban? <laughs> Both groups believe they have the right to oppress and the right to imprison people for their own good. Owens. <laughs> Owens is the latest high-profile conservative commentator to criticise Australia's COVID-19 measures. Fox News host Laura Ingraman in August mocked Sydney's lockdown despite the case per population of 0.004%, while fellow host Tucker Carlson last month slammed, uh, slammed Australia's draconian policies. Earlier this month, Australia became a surprising, a surprising vocal point of a march against vaccine mandates for teachers in New York with hundreds of demonstrators gathering outside Australian consulate chanting Save Australia and some waving flags. High-profile Republican politicians, including Florida Governor Ron DeSantos and Texas Senate Senator Ted Cruz. Australia has largely escaped the worst of the pandemic with just 1,448 deaths. The official <laughs> US death toll stands at more than 729,000. Yeah, I think we'll just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, that's funny. <laughs> anyway. 
No, we're right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> All right. So let's see what's happened with um uh, with Alec Baldwin. So he actually there was his his film. Oh no, Cal, that's horrible. So Alec Baldwin. This is a tragedy. Um. So fired a prop gun that killed a cinematographer and injured a director. So obviously there was there was not. I was going to make a really bad joke, but there were there were no blanks in the gun. It, it was real. So Alec Baldwin fired a prop. Uh, Alec Baldwin fired a prop gun, which killed a woman on the set of the new movie Rust. The woman died, and a man was injured when a prop gun was discharged by Baldwin at the New Mexico location in Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office. Confirmed. Um, the killed woman. <laughs> huh? The killed woman. Who wrote this? was identified as cin cin cinematographer Helena Hutchins, 42, and the injured man as director Joel Souza, 48. Authorities confirmed Hutchins was taken by helicopter to the University of New Mexico Hospital, where she was pronounced dead. Souza was transported by ambulance to a different facility. An active investigation is being conducted by the Sheriff's Office, but no charges have been filed. Production at the Bonanza Creek Ranch in Santa Fe was halted. <laughs> Um, and initially sent into lockdown. A spokesperson for the production told Deadline there was an accident today on the New Mexico set of Rust involving a misfire of a prop gun with paint. So that's right, it did it happen to Bruce Lee's son, correct? So that's Alec Baldwin. Sources told TMZ that either shrapnel or a bullet struck Hutchins and Suzo Baldwin was not injured. Sheriff's Office added, according to investigators, it appears that the scene being filmed involved the use of a prop firearm. When it discharged, detectives are investigating how and what type of projectile was discharged. Hutchins has primarily worked on short films since graduating um, from the American Film Institute in 2015, but lends the 2020 film Arc Um Where are we? The International Cinematographers Guild paid tribute to their colleague, we received devastating news this evening that one of our members, Halya Halna Hutchins, the director of photography on the production called Rust in New Mexico, died from injuries sustained on set. John Lindley, national president of the local 600 labor union, and Rebecca Ryan, national director, said. The, the details are unclear at this moment, but we are working to learn more and we support a full investigation into this tragic event. This is a terrible loss and we mourn the passing of a member of our guild's family. Early in the day, Baldwin posted a photo of himself dressed in the Western wear, the, excuse me, Western wear from the set. Back in person at the office, Baldwin captioned post "Blimey, it's exhausting." Director Souza also wrote "Rust," which Baldwin is producing as well as starring in. The film was to be centered on outlaw Harland Rust, who breaks his teenage grandson out of prison when he's convicted of a death of a local rancher. The movie also starred Titanic. Francis Fisher, Good Boys, Brady Noon, Supernaturals, Jensen Eccles, and Australian Avis, uh, actor Travis Fimmel. The Rust incident evokes the 1993 accidental death of Brandon Lee on the set of The Crow. Um, Lee died after he was hit with a bullet which had been lodged in the barrel of a gun, which was fired along with a, a blank cartridge. Lee was the son of legendary Bruce Lee. Oh, that's very nice, Cal, that you consider this home. We try. We try to make this a really nice place, a uh, safe place. That's what I aim to do, and that's my goal. So, anyway. So, that is very interesting that... Terry White Kemmer is now administering the AstraZeneca and...
I don't care <laughs> what Terry White was, was doing. I didn't say that. Close by. Um, yeah. All these auto things. All right. So let's look at, gee, we're an hour and two in it and we, we're we only going to watch a couple of KJ clips because um, I believe they, they went, I don't know, I didn't, did anyone see her Instagram? I believe she did a live today while well, the FBI was doing their, their press conference and then she went on Instagram where she told people off. So let's look at the Cleo Smith tragedy because this is, this is a tragedy. Oh, man. All right. So, doesn't get any worse. Lead detectives bleak update Cleo Smith's death. Yes, you did miss the uh, friendly Geordies. If you want to look at it, that was first up. It was 15.57. It was right at the start. So, the top detective investigating Cleo Smith's disappearance has given a bleak Uh, has given a bleak update this morning saying details around the case don't get any worse and that the police strongly believe someone else was involved. Detective Superintendent Rod Wilde from WA Police spoke on the Today Show where he revealed that despite almost a week of search in the area where she vanished, the hunt for the missing four-year-old hasn't led us anywhere. So that gathered with some ev some of the evidence. Oh, that's him, obviously. Um, with some of the evidence that we have gained from the tent and the surrounds there has led us to believe that possibly someone else is involved in her disappearance. The team is working around the clock to investigate all of those leads and we are hopeful that we may lead us to discovering where Chloe is. He added there were still no suspects, but he was hoping that would change as new information came in. And don't forget the government has put an, has put a million dollars as a reward for information. So... There's a lot of information that's coming, so we are going through that methodically. Look, we are hopeful that will lead us to discovering where she is. He also spoke about the impact of the disappearance on Cleo's family. Look, it doesn't get any worse. We know that we feel for the parents. The interview came shortly after Cleo's mum, Ellie, made a desperate plea directly to her daughter almost seven days after she disappeared from her family's tent. On Thursday night, Miss Smith said, Miss Smithy took to Instagram to say, My princess, where are you? She posted alongside a WA police video announcing a $1 million reward for information which leads to her return or the arrest and conviction of anyone involved in her suspicious disappearance. The suspected kidnapper of four-year-old Cleo would have plenty of options to flee WA's North Coast. So what they've done, so here's the blowhole, blowholes campsite, which is there when you look at the map of Australia. So they're obviously looking at all the places, all the big all the towns that you could go. The girl's mother and stepfather remain at the isolated campsite where she was last seen, hoping against the odds she'll be found safe nearby. They are the only people other than those searching for their little girl who remain at the campground. Mrs Smith hadn't been posting regularly on social media, but yes, they posted twice. I miss you. I love you. She wrote on Instagram Yes. Um, the same morning, please come home to me. West Australia Police have appealed to the public to look for any signs that might bring answers to the whereabouts of the missing girl as a huge reward is offered for information. On Thursday, West Australia Premier Mark McGowan announced a $1 million reward to anyone who has information that can help a fight authorities find the missing girl. It's been six days since the four-year-old disappeared from her family's tent. And police have admitted there are a few leads, no suspects and no sign of where she went. She couldn't have just disappeared. It's a sad situation and very difficult situation. Naturally, our thoughts go to everyone involved, especially the family and the friends of Cleo. We have ensured that we've delivered all the resources that police have requested in relation to this case. Police are looking around the clock to try and find Cleo now, Mr McGowan told reporters. So the WA government is essentially, um, you know, and uh, is a, whatever the police need, they're getting. Uh, Australia. She's from Australia. 
Um, she's been now missing. Uh, she's been missing for six days now. Um, Jenna. She disappeared from a tent, and they believe someone's abducted her. And unfortunately, um, it's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, particularly where they're located in Western Australia, it's middle of nowhere. We're going to offer a million dollar reward to anyone that provides information that leads us to finding Chloe. They will hopefully allow us to help discover the location of Cleo. Sorry, I said Chloe. Cleo, as soon as possible. I urge anyone who has knowledge of the location of Cleo, please provide the information to police and ensure we can provide some certainty and information to Cleo's loved ones. She's four. And hopefully bring Cleo back safe and sound. More than 100 police personnel, army reserves and volunteers are currently involved in an extensive land, air and sea search. Deputy Police Commissioner Cole Blanche said a large number of police had been tasked to the case. The police were also, uh, the public were also tasked with looking for signs that may lead to more clues or information. It's not just up to the police to find Cleo. That's why we're making a public appeal. They've also made a public appeal in each of the states because um there would have been time for them to get well they could be trying to cross the border um today's announcement is to say everybody needs to be looking for cleo look at people who've acted strangely since the 16th look at people who have been in the area are you not are you not quite sure what happened the arts questions he said the reward is a significant step towards the establishment of finding where cleo is the cooperation of the community is what we are urgently seeking. I ask the community if you see anything, if you have seen anything or you know anything, please call Crime Stoppers or walk into a police station across Australia. Someone in our community knows what happened to Cleo. Someone has the knowledge that can help. Now there's a million reasons why you need to come forward. So they put, as I said, the West Australian Government has put a $1 million reward for her to be found. There's the police horses. So uh, Detective Superintendent Rod Weil said authorities remain hopeful that they will find her alive, but we hold great fears for her safety. The information we have received, we have not been able to locate her. We imagine we would locate her given the amount of resources and detailed search that is taking place. That leads us to believe she was taken from the campsite, he said. Asked whether he thought Cleo was taken by somebody not known to her, he said the police, the police are keeping an open mind in relation to that and will look at all possibilities. Um, it is very remote, Jenna. Commissioner Blanche said the likelihood of Cleo being taken and removed from that area is now higher. So there you go. So how... She, how they managed to get her quietly, I guess. I know that uh, some of, Janet would be farmers that would use, yeah, I was going to say, I think some of the farmers have, used, have offered up their choppers. I think there's been a lot of resources. So just so that you know, Jenna, here's where it is in the, on the map of Australia. Um, and it's in the middle of nowhere. So these are the major towns that are nearby. Um, and so they're at this camp stop. So there's usually lots of petrol stations. So a lot of these places would just have a petrol station, a gas station, and nothing else. And then Calberry is like a established country, Mikathera, Tom Price, Onslow, other larger towns. But there, there would be nothing. They're essentially in the middle of nowhere. Um, so yeah, it's going into seven days now. So there's no update. So it's really quite. Um, sad. Um, as I said yesterday, um, the school that she attends will set up counsellors uh, so that uh, so that they can deal with the you know they, they're there to assess to assist any 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 children that need counselling that are affected by it. So they come from Carnarvon. Right. So yesterday we also talked about Eddie Obeid, another politician. Uh, he actually has now been ordered to jail. He's going to go spend, he's now spending, he's about to spend his first night in jail. 
So yesterday he said that he was managed to get a reprieve because he was sick. Judge denies disgraceful former New South Wales Minister Eddie O'Bead's bail and orders him to prison. So he's 77 on Thursday. It was, he was 77 on Thursday. He was given a minimum sentence of three years and ten months for conspiring over a coal licence where his son was jailed for three and his co-conspirator was jailed for five. So um, Moses Obeid and Ian McDonald were taken straight away into custody to tra and transferred to Sydney Civil Ward Jail. Eddie Obeid was allowed to return to his Hunter's Hill home after his lawyer complained that because of his serious health issues he could catch COVID at the police station. So after spending the night home with his family, he faced court again via video link. He sat in an armchair near a window. <laughs> um, the Director of Public Prosecutions told Justice Fullerton that 83% of adults in the state jail had received their first COVID vaccine dose and 65% are fully vaccinated. The judge needed more information specifically about COVID-19 protocols at the police station. Um, she refused permanent bail for Eddie O'B uh, until his appeal hearing, stating there was no exceptional circumstances which warranted it. She told Eddie O'B he does not have to go to Surrey Hills Police Centre, but he must go straight to jail with the solicitor by 10 a.m. on Saturday. Go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not correct. Do not collect two hundred dollars. The judge said draft grounds of appeal she had been presented with by Eddie O'B's barrister include that she wrongly concluded there was reasonable evidence of his participation in the conspiracy. The judge said she did not propose to engage further in any analysis, dialogue or consideration on the matter, which now must be turned over to the Court of Criminal Appeal. So he is, well, Saturday night, he gets to spend his first night in jail. So there we go. All right. Oh, the one that's missing. Oh, oh, what's his name? Yeah. Um, what's his name? I should know. Um, Daniel. Is it Daniel? No, it's not. That was no. Um, William Tyrrell. William Tyrrell. He's still missing. Tyrrell's not being found. And they, in 2016, a million dollars, a million dollars was um, put up as a reward, but they've not found him yet. It sparked one of the largest police investigations in Australian history. So, um, and it was a, he went missing from his foster grandparents' house. And because there was child welfare, because it was a, a child welfare role, it was, um, yeah. Uh, Jenna White, uh, White, William Tyrrell's. Okay, so let's get to this one. So I believe she had people on her stream today and she lost somebody today because uh, they didn't like her attitude and she told them to go if they didn't like her to unsubscribe. So let's look at some of her. We're not going to look at all of it. We're going to look at some of it. So this is clip one. I know, sorry, Cal. <laughs> hey, I made it through past an hour before I did it. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's have a look. ...to the integrity of this investigation. All right, let's have a look. Stephen Bernalino has, like, I think he's legitimately lost his mind. That's just me. But he flat out said, he's so angry. He is so mad. And you guys, I get it. Like, some of the questions that are being asked by him 
by the media are ridiculous. I don't think it's the responsibility of these very credible news sources to be feeding into ridiculous conspiracies online. I think it's uh, really doing a disservice to the integrity of this investigation by feeding into these stupid conspiracies, like that the body was planted. I don't think we should the Duggars a cult because of one of their children. Okay. Fake Jesse Metcalf. <laughs> Literally, there's a fake Jesse Metcalf there. That's ridiculous. Is she saying that someone's fake? Why would you make a fake Jesse Metcalf? Uh, anyways. No, I'm it's not from um Amy's. You're a fan account. Okay, got it. They are cult though, sorry. Okay. Okay, first of all. No. Oh. No. The prosecutors don't have conversations with um, people that are not invest under investigation. Prosecutors do not have conversations with people who are just innocent people that are not part of an investigation. So, no, it's not common for random Joe public to have a conversation with a prosecutor about potential charges. Okay. So just for instance... If you're, if you happen to have no, nothing to do with something, there's literally zero reason for the prosecutor to have a conversation with you about charges. Prosecutors don't waste their time. Federal prosecutors. Let me tell you something. <laughs> right. Oh, dear me. First of all, no. Prosecutors don't have conversations with um, people that are not invest under investigation. Prosecutors do not have conversations with people who are just innocent people that are not part of an investigation. So, no, it's not common for random Joe Public to have a conversation with a prosecutor. Is she calling me Joe Public? <laughs> and random? I'm not random. <laughs> about potential charges okay mm. so just for instance if you're if you happen to have no, nothing to do with something there's literally zero reason for the prosecutor to have a conversation with you about charges prosecutors don't waste their time federal prosecutors let me tell you something federal <laughs> prosecutors do not waste their time talking to someone if they don't feel like there are charges that are worth discussing. Federal prosecutors do not have conversations, period, with someone unless there's probable cause or reason to be having a conversation with someone about charges. The FBI would not be sitting down with someone and talking about criminal charges on something if they didn't feel that there was a reasonable belief that there could have been a crime that was committed. <laughs> So, no, I don't say that's normal. It's only normal if your clients are under investigation. It's only normal if the FBI is looking at your clients as an accessory after the fact or potentially obstructing justice. <sighs> if your clients are obstructing justice or if your clients might have helped Brian clean out his car, van, get rid of evidence, then they have a reason to talk to you about criminal charges. Yes, Rock Athena, we know he's not a criminal attorney. Correct. So his explanation makes no sense. She can't talk about attorneys. What isn't normal? What, what, Joanne, what isn't normal is KJ. Right, so there is another one. Oh, yeah, so this is clip three. So here's where she's going to get annoyed that people are talking about Alec Baldwin. And there is another one where Llama Girl picks up, again, shout out to Llama Girl, you are a legend, um, about 
her body language. So we, we might look at that one as well. So watch this. No, the parent, yes, the parents did not. Exactly. But it doesn't make any sense at all for him to act like it's just normal status quo. There's no reason for them to talk to the, like, they wouldn't have been sitting down with them <laughs> and been like, oh. Is that like when KJ talks about the fact that she sat down with the FBI to talk about Todd Chrisley? Is that the same, is that the same thing? <laughs> this is literally the first time Bertolino in the entirety of this entire situation has even acknowledged that the reason why he has been hired by them is because they're fucking under investigation. <laughs> no shit. He confirmed to us that the family is under investigation. He confirmed that they were talking to him about charges. He says, well, at the time, they didn't believe that the charges were necessary. Well, fortunately, Christine, Lama Girl trigger puts trigger warnings, and I'm going to stay away from those where I can. Well, maybe at the time they didn't have enough to charge them with anything. If anyone knows anything about the FBI, they move like at the <laughs> pace of a snail. And the reason that they do that. If anyone knows the FBI. <laughs> I love that. If anyone knows the FBI. No one knows the FBI as well as her, obviously. <laughs> Tigger talk warning, yeah. It's 900 kilometers from Perth, is it? The um, 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 Carnarvon? Yeah. Oh, boy. If anyone knows. Well, the, the other thing is she refers to Laundry as a murderer, and he, as far as we know, he's not because he was never down. He was never been. He was... So he was wanted for fraud, not more murder. She's made some very um, um, you know, it's some very interesting allegations. And again, they're you know, referring to him as a murderer. We don't know. We don't know. For all we know, they've both been victims of something. She said, really? Is that what she's saying, Christine? No. How do we know that? Um, why can't they have both had been, why couldn't they both have succumbed to foul play? I'm just saying, I'm just putting things out there because I don't know. And it does happen. We did, I mean, Australia did have the backpacker murders where backpackers were killed in, in bush and were found and, and they, they eventually got the murderer. Why can't that have, why can't that happen in um, the US? Well, that's what I'm saying, Will. It is a long shot, but you can't assume because we don't know. And both of them are now not with us to actually be able to tell us what happened. Case of a snail and the reason that they do that is because they build their case and bring charges and it's so damn rock solid that there's no way you're going to get out of those charges <laughs> so when the fbi finally has charges and can arrest you and bring the indictment you're done you're toast so maybe at that moment they didn't have the evidence that they needed for the charges but that didn't mean that evidence wasn't coming which means that's to my opinion why Why? Why are we talking about Alec Baldwin? This has literally nothing to do with Alec Baldwin. We, why are we talking about Alec, Alec Baldwin? I'm not talking about Alec Baldwin. What is? What are people talking about Alec Baldwin? <laughs> okay, I got completely... Alec killed someone? What? 
And then she switches off comments, I believe. Uh, so she gets mad. She turns comments off and takes a, and tells people to take a chill pill. I don't know anything about Alex. Oh, it's breaking. Okay, first of all. Yeah, have a listen to this. I was just watching the stuff on Brian Laundry. Okay, Alec Baldwin shot someone on set today. Okay. I did see that there was a death on a movie set. I did not see that Brian, that Alec Baldwin had anything to do with it. Okay. Got it. But this right now isn't about Alec Baldwin. So can we not talk about Alec Baldwin right now? Because we're talking about the laundry situation. So if you want to talk about... Well, we're talking about the KJC. No. <laughs> Anyone see the alleged leader of... Really? QAnon is running for office. Really? Wow. That's interesting. <laughs> oh, dear me. <sighs> Keep on topic, people. Keep on topic. I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care, as you know. I don't care. <laughs> oh. About Alec Baldwin, you can go find mm -hmm. another live stream to talk about Alec Baldwin. We are. <gasps> Did you just hear that? <laughs> so, if you want to talk about Alec Baldwin, you can go find another live stream to talk about Alec Baldwin. We are not talking about <laughs> Alec Baldwin right now. Okay. Oh, I'm rude. <laughs> can't believe she has to try and control her chat like that. I can't believe it either. Is she a bit annoyed that she didn't actually get it first? <laughs> She's being told. She missed out on some breaking news. She wasn't there to, um, she wasn't there to uh, make it, report on it. Why you guys are bringing Alec Baldwin into this conversation about the laundries? <laughs> Please stay focused on the issue at hand. Stay, stay focused. I'm trying to talk. He can't. <laughs> Answering, but all these people in the chat are talking about Alex, and it has nothing. We're, when I never talk about Alex, let's talk about what's going on at the laundries. Um, apparently, Thanks. she's talking I'm, about um, one of the other cases. Is it Summer Summer Wells? I saw something where she was talking, uh, someone asked her to cover the Summer Wells case. So, I mean, if she wants a good case, I mean, she just has to look at front. There's the <laughs> You, 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 you. <laughs> Stay on the KJ side. <laughs> Do we have to time everybody out if they change, if they're not on the topic? <laughs> oh. It's horrible that someone was shot on Alex's set. They just went shot. They died. But let's focus on the laundry comments. So now she says comments have been turned off. She's turned them off because she wants the full, uh, the full audience. <laughs> I need to add another thing for Ralph where uh, Ralph says, please stay on topic. <laughs> we all should go in stream and ask about like Baldwin. <laughs> okay. We are not talking about Alex. All right. I'm going to. Oh, the thing is, plan to create if she covers friendly Geordies, the friendly Geordies, um, the friendly Geordies crew will absolutely crucify her. <laughs> that would be the only thing is that there is no way that the friendly Geordies crew would let her get away with 
what she does. <laughs> so I would like to see that just for that. Because <laughs> we do have about five conversations going on at once and sometimes I'm involved in all five. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> her bras might sue her. <laughs> hey, that would be interesting. <laughs> I'll just turn comments off here for you guys to take a chill pill here. <gasps> Two comments off so you can talk. <laughs> no, the parent, yes, the parents did not. Right exactly. Right. Alec Baldwin is not the cop topic for you guys to take a chill pill here. <laughs> a discussion for this if something if, if someone died on set of alec baldwin's video movie i will uh check that out later we'll get to that another time <gasps> <Don't worry. laughs> she'd be decimated by fj see and that would be that would be entertainment rufus <laughs> we would all want to watch that right <laughs> oh dear me <laughs> I heard that. Um, I heard that that some of that trauma story was uh, was Suzanne's. Yes, about the church. And now we're going to finish talking about Bertolino. <laughs> so <laughs> these interviews that Bertolino has been doing. So would I, Rufus? I would pay good money to see that. <laughs> I really would pay good money to see that. He's like super angry. He's pissed off. He's like yelling at everyone. Now, some of the questions are asinine. <laughs> Does she know? So, oh, she's decided to donate another thousand dollars. She says she, she thinks she's generous. Um, someone goes. She goes. Oh, okay. So, we'll skip a few. So, this is where she's going to go off at someone about asking about Todd C. Um, and then she talks about her son. Oh, someone's letting off fireworks. Toad. All right, so we'll, we'll watch and they we'll watch this one. She goes off at somebody. I mean, didn't the neighbors say they saw Chris helping Brian clean out the van? So you mean to tell me? Wait on. Look at her face. Look, look, look at that face. She's. Why are you smiling about it? It's not something to smile about. So you mean to tell me Brian came home from his trip with Gabby and Chris cleaned the van out with him? Yes, Athena. We know he's not a criminal attorney. Athena, I love you so much, sweetheart. You are so, um, you're getting so stressed out about the same topics. We know he's not a criminal attorney. But when you. Doesn't she have a um, estate planner for her attorney? No, you're not worried. I've never seen you before, Essence of Glitter, and you know you're not worried. Because my subscribers who fucking follow me <gasps> and care about me know that we're not talking about these topics and know it's a stupid question. Isn't you're so... not worried about me. People that say they're worried about that bullshit, they're like so stupid. You're not worried about me. Anyways. Because the people that are really my subscribers and care know that that's irrelevant. I can't under any circumstances. Yes, I love you too, Jessica. She doesn't even go here. Okay. There's nothing to be worried about. Y'all know that. Okay. So I don't know what they did. Here's my thought. I'm a mom. 
No. Okay. Well, no. We're playing the I'm a mum card. <gasps> night, night, Cal. <laughs> She's a mum. So am I. <laughs> <sighs> and I'm like trying to imagine this. Okay, my son is nine, so we're not into this phase where he's dating another woman <laughs> or a man. Wait on, wait on, wait on. Hang on. Hang on. She said where he's dating another woman. Is he already dating a woman? Have a listen. Have a listen. <laughs> Have a listen. Dating another. So we're not into this phase where he's dating another woman. Another woman. So is he already dating one? <laughs> okay, Jay, you cracked me up. You imagine this, okay? My son is nine, so we're not into this phase <gasps> where he's dating another woman or a man. We don't know what my son is attracted to it at nine. He's <laughs> dating another woman. Huh. Well, you actually would normally have to see people to know what you're attracted to, who you're attracted to. <laughs> He's, I mean, he thinks girls are. No, I know. <laughs> oh. He thinks girls are what? And he's never expressed that boys are cute, so I don't know. But he's nine, and he hasn't hit puberty, so we haven't really gone there yet. But <laughs> if my son one day decided to come home, and um, I know you're saying that's why he's not competent. I understand that, Athena. Okay. So we love you, Athena. You're very passionate. Um. If my son showed up at you guys, if my son showed up and he was all like, mom, I'm home. And he, he was all like, but my girlfriend isn't here and I have her card and I have her credit card and I have her fucking phone and I have her, I have her debit card on me. I've got her van mom. Um, but she just wanted to stay in Utah. Y'all, you know what I would be doing? My ass would be on the phone with Gabby's mom the minute that... You reckon? You reckon? You don't know what you would do, KJ. You don't know what you would do. You cannot say what you would do. How many people have said, when I have kids, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, and then they have kids, and they do totally the opposite because it's, it's, it's a different situation. You know, you can't say what you would do. You don't know. You don't know what was said. Now, what if Gabby had spoken to Brian's parents and uh, what's his name's parents and said that she was staying in and that she was going to, he was bringing the van back home? I don't know. I haven't seen the conversations. A kid showed up in my fucking driveway without Gabby, with her fucking van, and with her car. And I'm not drunk. <laughs> someone, someone, someone said she's drunk. <laughs> her fucking van and with her car. And I'm not drunk. I'm just You're right, plan to create. She would believe what his child said because that's what you do as a parent. You might have some doubts, you might have some questions, but ultimately you always want to think the best of your child. <laughs> just pissed off and it's on Instagram and I can swear on Instagram. <laughs> Like, I would be calling Gabby's mom and being like, my son just showed up without your daughter. He's got her phone and he's got her van and he's got her card. I don't know if he had her phone. So that's an exaggeration. But <laughs> that's what I would be doing. Then oh. I'd be saying, where's Gabby? I wouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> 
how do you know that that conversation did not occur, like where they didn't ask him where she is? You don't. <laughs> Buying my son's bullshit story that, oh, we broke up. Gabby abused me. She almost got arrested. I mean, I'm imagining he probably. Um, hello, this is your son. If your son said that he was abused or that you would be believing your child. I'm sorry. How does she know? Is she... she obviously, oh yeah. Probably lied. I'm honest to God imagining that he lied because he's probably a liar. <laughs> He's probably a liar. What does a liar look like? I've heard of a liar bird. <laughs> I'm guessing he told his mom and dad that Gabby hit him, that he almost got, she almost got arrested because he's the abused one. He probably made up some stupid ass story about how <laughs> she wanted to stay with her friends and he just came home. And why isn't that plausible? <laughs> oh, dear me. All right, let's skip a few. All right, uh, KJ go, clearly drunk, goes off at people and tells them to go watch CNN if they can't understand that she's speculating. She says this is commentary. She says don't watch if you don't understand. <laughs> He's probably a liar. All right, let's watch this. Uh, all right. Uh, I was a mosquito on that camping trip too. So I think he lied to them and I think he believed their, they believed their lies. But I think the problem entailed at this point oh. is that I think they might have helped clean out his van because the neighbors saw him help clean out the van. So if you're. Well, why couldn't he say, not to be hateful about, not to. Well, no one knows. You're right, Jenna. No one knows what happens. But why couldn't he have said, I need to clean out the van for to take it back to Gabby? Hello? <laughs> You're helping your son indirectly clean out a van that happens to have evidence in it of a crime. You're helping destroy evidence indirectly, even if you don't necessarily know that there was evidence allegedly that was in there. Yeah, helping destroy evidence, even though you don't know that there's evidence in there. <laughs> oh, and she wonders why no one takes her seriously. <laughs> right? Yes, this is all alleged. So <laughs> if you're allegedly helping your son clean out a van. Oh, dear me. You've helped destroy evidence, and destruction of evidence is a serious crime. But you don't know it's a crime. <laughs> Rufus says, well, I'm never cleaning anyone's van ever again. <laughs> Look at her laugh. Look at her smile. And it helps, and it's also obstruction of justice. And then when... The neighbor said that they saw the dad and him cleaning the van. That's all I know. That was in an interview from weeks ago. If you follow. Oh, no. What did I just do? Oh. But if you'd seen evidence. Necessarily know that there was evidence of the van. You've helped destroy evidence, and destruction of evidence is a serious crime. And it helps, and it's also obstruction of justice. And then <laughs> when the neighbor said that they saw the dad and him cleaning the van. That's all I know. It must only occur in the U.S. plan to create. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I thought you could only get done for destruction of evidence if you actually knew it was a crime. 
I thought you would have to have known that there was a crime to scheme. <laughs> Your brain. <laughs> well, that's why it's a good thing that she doesn't talk about him, but I would like to hear, I'd like to hear a take on it just for a laugh. <laughs> That was in an interview from weeks ago. If you followed the story, that's not, I'm not making this up. I'm literally not making that up. That was an interview where a neighbor said, and I am saying that's their account. I'm not saying it's factual. I'm saying that's what the witness said. And of course I'm fucking speculating. Do we have to like put a disclaimer on everything I say? This is commentary. Do you want to watch the news? Go to NBC and go to CNN. I'm here having some commentary. If you can't understand that I'm talking about my opinions and my speculations, don't watch. I am <laughs> oh, all right, here we go again. Here's another one. But I do. I have commentary. <laughs> exactly all of this is speculation outside of the fact that Bertolino said that they met with the FBI who talked about charges <laughs> right they don't talk about charges with people that are not under investigation <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm here for the speculation. We don't know the facts. KJ says yes. You, I mean KJ. Plant your pet says yes. You need to disclaim because you make it sound as if it's fact. It that well, that's the problem. She makes it sound like it's fact. Oh. <laughs> KJ is hard to watch and understand. Yeah, I know, Cal. <laughs> I mean. I stick to the facts for the most part. I allow you guys to leave comments. I allow you guys to speculate all day long. Do I not get an opportunity to then think about what you guys say? <laughs> Half of the reason I end up coming up with some of the conclusions that I come up with are because of the amazing comments that you guys make <laughs> and the insight that you guys give, right? <laughs> so... I think that they might have indirectly, whether they knew or not, helped Brian get rid of things. You can't be charged as an accessory if you can't be charged for something if <laughs> um, you can't. I don't know how you can be charged with something that's planned to create said <laughs> that if you didn't know. Everything that comes out of my mouth is the same. <laughs> yeah, blame in the blame in the chat. Yeah, there was like twenty. There's twenty eight clips. We're not going to look at all of them. I'm just going to pick three of them. Like the van, like cleaning the van, like maybe. I mean, they don't even have Gabby's stuff. So where is Gabby's stuff? <laughs> Yes. I mean, if the FBI is talking to them about charges, yes, they could be facing jail time. <laughs> Obstruction of justice has jail sentences. So does tampering with evidence. So does destruction of evidence. So does aiding and abetting. Oh, gee whiz. Because if you remember. She's pulling all it. She's pulling everything out today. <laughs> the reason why I think they've been lawyered up this whole time do you remember the very first press release that the FBI put out after Gabby was found? Do you guys remember that first press release by the FBI? <laughs> oh, oh he, co he comes tied now. We're going to get tied. Not only were interested in people that were part of the crime, that committed the murder, but anyone that helped after the fact do you guys remember that in the first press release by the fbi they said not only <laughs> and that's not like 
I thought that was very interesting. <laughs> um, so tired of people sitting. Sorry, she's a lot easier to watch when she's had when she's uh, been drinking her water. Yeah, they need to imagine they're in a lot. I think they knew even then. Let me give me one second. I'm going to see if I can find that press release mm -hmm. so I can put it for you so you can see it. Okay, one second. <laughs> I couldn't find it, <laughs> so I found. I'm sorry, I should be laughing. This is. Yeah, I heard, so there was a. It was after her death had been ruled a homicide. They had put out um, this press release that said that they were going to vigorously um, investigate to determine <laughs> the involvement of anyone in the homicide and anybody that had aided or assisted following the death. And I remember reading that and I was like, well, that's interesting. As though they knew that yeah. there had already been help. And I think the reason why they think there was help because it's Brian fucking laundry. I think as much as people wanted to villainize him, I think he was a mama's boy that what? relied. What? What? How do you get that he's a mama's boy? <laughs> How do you work that out? How do you get to that conclusion? <laughs> oh. <laughs> right on everyone else to wipe his ass and do his shit for him. What? And it is true about a missing gun. Okay. Brian was All right. KJ thinks it's weird. She says she wouldn't go on a second camping trip. All right. Yes, them lawyering up is sus as fuck. Exactly. Um, um, I'd be Laura. I would be lawyering up as well if my son's girlfriend had died. Well, and was well was missing, and there was suspicion. Wouldn't you be lawyering up as well? Or you'd be having somebody speak on your behalf. I thought that was normal to do. Famous people do it all the time. They get their lawyers to speak for them so they don't have to. And don't forget, the parents may not have been in a, in a, an emo, a state that they wanted to talk, so having somebody talk for them is the best thing. Todd just films his Todd's take tonight, and I heard him editing it. I don't know. They haven't said anything about the notes. Oh, Todd's just Todd's doing his own editing. That's interesting. She's letting him do his own edit. Wow. Go off. Well, that's what I do. <sighs> so I think, I mean, Roberta Laundry was Roberta Laundry was, what do you call it? She was canceling the camping trip that she had scheduled with her husband, Christopher, or douchebag canoe. <gasps> um, what did she just call him? Douchebag canoe and Berta, and they were going to go camping, and she canceled it two days ahead of time, meaning that she knew that Brian was on his way home, right? So if she... Um, really? She knew that he was on his way home? Why? Just because you can't. Where does, where does this speculation come from? She's on his way home and she's already canceling his camping trip. And thank you for your, your badge. Then at some point, 
one would think if you're on your camping trip, why are you going to like cancel your camping trip? And then like, as soon as your son gets home, make a new camping trip. It's just so weird. Like <laughs> you you can't leave. I told you, Cal, it's like a train wreck. Once you, once you, uh, once you're on that train, you can't get off it. <laughs> that's why we do what, that's why we watch it. <laughs> You're gonna go like make s'mores after your son comes home without his girlfriend that's just so weird and why would you go on a camping trip with your son after he just went camping for two months um hello <laughs> she answered her own question why would you go on a camping trip with your son uh, well, because he'd been away for two months <laughs> they hadn't seen him they wanted to spend time together alone. <laughs> I don't know if I got if I was on a camping trip for like two solid months. The last thing I'd want to do is go on another camping trip. <laughs> there will be a documentary, probably. As long as KJ doesn't write it. <laughs> I don't think there's any issue. Oh, look at this. Representation. I have two attorneys. Oh, I just got rid of my third. I had four at one point. Oh, she's got she's got two attorneys now. She had four. All right, so you so you platinum then? Yeah, look, that's why we watch her because it's it's hilarious. <laughs> she's got four, she's got two three uh, two attorneys now. At all with having legal representation, I have two attorneys. I just got rid of my third. I had four at one point. I have attorneys that I talk to a lot. <laughs> um. She just paid, she must have just paid Mr. Brown. I try to leave and just go play music instead, but this keeps me interested. Because <laughs> people love to sue me. And <laughs> Did you just say people love to sue her? Did you just say that? Attorneys. I just got rid of my third. I had four at one point. I have attorneys that I talk to a lot because people love to sue me. And friv frivolously. <laughs> and I think there's zero wrong with having an attorney. I also think it's extremely good advice to not <laughs> talk, to not uh, follow the advice of <laughs> Jesus. I <laughs> she needs to listen to what she's saying. Listen. Advice to not talk to not uh to follow the advice of your attorney to not follow did she say to not follow the advice of the her have a listen i know she paused i know she means to follow the advice of her attorney but she says to not follow the advice of the attorney listen to not uh to follow the advice of your attorney <laughs> we know she doesn't follow the advice of her attorneys because <laughs> she would not have um talked about Todd Christley the other day. <laughs> but if you're just the mom and the dad, you don't need an attorney. How do you know? <laughs> How, who's they're allowed to have an attorney? Are they not allowed to have an attorney because they're a mum and a dad? Is that what she's saying? If I want an attorney, I can have an attorney as long as I pay for an attorney. Cassie doesn't have an attorney. <sighs> You're totally going to get on the bandwagon and sue me. Well, Jonathan Richards is probably going to sue me now too. <gasps> Who's Jonathan Richards, by the way? Who is that? Who's Jonathan Richards?
Who's Jonathan Richards? Oh. Totally gonna get on the bandwagon and sue me. Well, Jonathan Richards is probably gonna sue me now too. So. No, Roberta did not use to work for the FBI. She was to, I think she used to work for Suffolk County, but I don't think she was like, I think she just, I don't think she was an illegal. Is it super expensive? I don't know. I'm not going to tell you about my money. <laughs> They do different things. You brought up your lawyers. <laughs> Either way, rather than helping your son cover up his crimes, the logical human being would have just like not helped your son cover up a crime, allegedly, if that's what's going on. How do you know? How do you know that... <sighs> or if they're obstructing justice, or if they're doing something. But they had Bertolino on the phone before, like, shit hit the fan. Maybe they're friends and they're going, hey, Bertolino, how you doing? <laughs> he might be a family friend. <laughs> and they've just... Oh, anyway, as I said, I don't know. I'm spec. I mean, if if KJ can speculate, I can speculate. But you know, I just don't know why she's so so thing about the fact that they had that they've got a lawyer. I think. Uh oh, she's thinking. Uh oh, she's thinking. <laughs> I think. And this is just my opinion. I think. Uh oh. And that's going to make. That's going to make it even worse for the parents because someone needs to get blamed for something, right? So it almost puts them in a worse position now. Why? He is dead. Oh, you don't feel bad that he's dead. Yeah. But that's somebody's, Thank you. somebody's son. But I think it's going to make it worse for the parents because they're going to need to charge someone for something. Because the FBI doesn't like to have a crime go un unadjudicated. So, and I also, they're not out of the woods for a wrongful death lawsuit by the Petitos. Really? They could still sue his parents. They have. To, they can't do wrongful death if he, if they don't know that he did it. We don't know. Oh, yeah. She. Uh, by the way, her voice is sped up. Yes, her voice is sped up. Lama girl sped up. I should have said that. I don't think you can be charged for a death if you weren't there. <laughs> That's what I mean, like. That's what we're saying. Here's the thing, though. The FBI doesn't like to scare suspects. They also don't like to tell people they're suspects. They don't like people to know that they're investigating them because they get freaked out about people knowing that they're investigating them because then they're going to get rid of evidence. But I will tell you this, which I think is really weird, and I said this on my live stream earlier today, that Berta, can we just call her Berta, Bertie? She deleted her Facebook. Oh. When all this hit the fan. That oh she's guilty. Deleted her Facebook. How dare she? Maybe she knew the scrutiny that was gonna happen and she didn't want to have to talk to people. 
Uh oh, guilty is charged. Uh oh. Deleting Facebook. What a crime. <laughs> what a crime. I'm sorry. <laughs> what a crime. Well, look, I don't know. We don't, as I said, I don't, we, we, we don't know. <laughs> And I understand, like, the media is watching, but why are you deleting your Facebook, Bert? Yeah, because, That's um, weird. because, because, yes, someone like KJ would be, would be stalking it. I don't know how they got the stolen, not got out of the Grand Theft Auto crap. I, you've got me on that. <laughs> All right. Oh, no trigger warning. We'll get rid of that trigger warning. Trigger warning. Oh, she goes off at people again because she gets called out. A trigger warning. Oh, she calls her, her subs S heads. She got called out for incorrect information, and that's how she read her Todd pipes up again, saying, We're going to expose KJ. Is he drinking again? Um,. She calls it some of her subs fools. Oh, wait. Okay. This one, someone asked to, about her drinking. All right. Let's have a look. There's just some fools that love to pick apart everything I say. Um, I haven't even had a full glass of wine, so no. That's another thing that drives me insane. I haven't even had, I haven't even had like half of a glass of wine, three sips of wine, four sips of wine. So I guess you can't drink wine without being drunk because that's exactly what happens, right? Make that make sense. Okay. One theory I've thought about, and what if one came when they asked about where Gabby, Gabby was? Oh, yeah, that doesn't even make. I don't know. I haven't. Had and then when she was put on the eleventh. Do we have any knowledge of Brian's parents or owning a gun? Only that there was a report that a gun was reported missing. And then Robert uh, Bertolino wouldn't wouldn't comment on it. But Brian did have a gun. I don't think he had a conceal and carry permit. His friends confirmed that Brian was a gun user, um, and that all of his friends had guns. I don't think he had anything to do with the murders of those two women in Utah. No. I think that's not even related. Wasn't Gabby found in Utah? Wait on. Yeah, I feel like the part if Gabby the skull was found, in... wait on. If there were two people that were found in Utah, and then Gabby was found in Utah, could the could the person have been the same person? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. I just, you know, and. I'm just wondering. Is pulled apart because of the animals. Oh. I think Gabby died on the 27th of August. Oh, okay. So now she's the um, medical examiner. Uh oh. We call it. What was that place called? Piglets? They reported seven people searching for Brian. Is that sure? Well, I think they were searching for Brian and then remains were found, but they were not connected to Brian. I think there's a lot that we learned through this process. 
people die every day in the United States of America. Bodies are found every day of the in the United States. Murders sadly happen probably almost every day in the United States of America. <sighs> We've learned that there are missing people. There are still thousands of missing people in the United States of America. We learned that there is a massive amount of women in the area of Wyoming where Gabby went missing that are indigenous that are missing over like what 700. We learned that people of color are underrepresented in the missing people's oh, cases. Geez, um, we learned the word white woman syndrome. We learned that uh, Stephen Bertolino is a jerk. <laughs> Just, but the meat people just got really everyone has to understand that Bertolino is there to represent his clients and to protect his clients so um that's his job so if he decides that he is going to protect his clients and not answer questions that's up to him not up to not up to me to determine Oh, Rufus, you own a van, do you? Uh oh, watch out. Oh, no, great journalism, I know. <laughs> oh. He's a jerk. They're obsessive in this case to the extent that they lost all sense of reason. And it did not help at all that people like Dog the Bounty Hunter were coming in and like adding all kinds of speculation that was completely unnecessary. No. <laughs> and she didn't put any speculation in. The black man with. <laughs> We learned Gabby will not be forgotten. We learned. Oh. We learned that police officers still need a lot to learn, have a lot to learn about domestic violence. Apparently so. Uh oh, no. So she talks about Sophie Long. We're not talking going there. Of course, she didn't cover Summer Wells. Oh, there we go. There's a drinking. All right, let's have a look at this one. I just feel like the search took way longer than it needed to take. Can we all say that it's so cute that Scarlett showed her face today? I actually don't feel sympathy for the parents right now because I still feel like they have something to hide. Until they can show me that they have nothing to hide, I don't feel sympathy for them. Oh, they've got to convince her. Kelly's been through hell. Even with Kelly's problems with Jake, who is, by the way, not her boyfriend, she's a way better parent than uh, Michael. Michael no. doesn't have custody. So a lot of you guys have asked me to pick up on the Summer Wells case and I have to pass on that because she's been missing for like months and months and months. And I feel like if I entered that case right now, I would be an interloper. <laughs> an interloper. I would catch hell if I entered that case at this point in time. I was asked to enter that case when it happened and I was not interested. <laughs> 
Um, See you, Rufus. <laughs> You're going to clean your van tomorrow. <laughs> missing children's cases are really complicated, and I don't always – The Summer Wells case, it just, it, it was too much for me. Can BL's parents be charged even though the case will be dropped because he's deceased? The case won't be dropped because he's deceased. Gabby was still murdered. Okay, so uh, no, we're not gonna do that one. Another trigger warning. All right, oh, all right. Let's get this one. We're getting there. I think everyone has the ability to use their voice to use it in a way that is meaningful to them, and if that is something that is super passionate for you. And you feel like you need closure, the best place to start is to start making noise on your platform. So start pushing out that information, put it on your platform, share it wide. At the end of the day, these parents may never have any answers that bring them peace. Agreed. I agree with that. It does make me mad that he killed, if he's, yeah. Cassie, did you see the photos of Cassie today? She looked really sad. Her brother's really dead. I think Cassie got screwed in this whole situation, to be honest. I hope the protesters leave the fucking laundries alone. All those protesters outside their house are a bunch of scammers. They're all scammers. None of them give a shit about Gabby. They do this with everything. Rich, Jonathan Riches, is literally the biggest scammer ever. No. Oh. It's gross. And harassing the laundries is so unnecessary. <laughs> if they did that in Minnesota, it would be illegal. It's crazy to me that that's allowed in the state of Florida. Of course it would be allowed in the state of Florida that you can pick it at somebody's house. Did you know residential picketing is legal in most states, but in Florida it's legal, which is why it's happening? I think the state of Florida has some seriously weird laws, and residential picketing is one of them. Did she just say? It's legal to picket. In the state of Minnesota, residential picketing, like what those protesters doing, are doing, it's... it's are, they, are her words slurring? <laughs> anyway, all right, we're nearly there. Uh, so, uh, they have guns because they're Republicans. All right. <laughs> uh, ooh. The Second Amendment. We're probably the only people in our neighborhood that don't have guns. My neighbor across the street is a detective. Yeah. My neighbor across the street is a detective. He said that anybody knows about, have a listen. Across the street is a detective. We're probably the only people in our neighborhood that don't have guns. My neighbor across the street is a detective. Oh. They don't have guns that anybody knows about. So, wow, he's. <laughs> yeah, my neighbor across the street is a detective. Detective. I don't, why would I, I'm not going to like pretend like I have a gun just to act like I'm hard. I don't have a gun. Um, The neighbors across the street, he's a detective and he has. Huh? I'm not going to pretend I have a gun.
gun just to act like I'm hard. I don't have a gun. I didn't say to act like you're hard. <laughs> Anyways, my neighbor across the street, I've never owned a gun. I'm 42 years old. We've never hold, held a gun. Neither one of us have guns. We don't own guns. Okay. Anyways. That's not what Toad said. <laughs> That's not what Toad said. <laughs> oh, dear me. We're probably the only ones in this neighborhood that don't own guns. But anyways, the neighbor across the street is a detective. And the dude is, you know how, like, detectives can end up being, like, uh, targets for criminals? Oh, no. she hasn't. This is the coolest thing about his house. I haven't been in there, but he told me about this. Oh, no. He has hidden compartments throughout his house where guns are hidden. Oh, no. She hasn't just done that. Because, like, criminals go after detectives. And, like, you know, like, they'll try to show up at, like, a, a judge's house or a cop's house and try to, like, kill them and shit. So when he built his house, he kept, he built secret compartments throughout his house where he hides guns. It's wild. She just didn't say that. No, I'm saying that, like, I have a lot of neighbors that are all about Second Amendment rights, like, having their guns. So, like, when we moved in and we were Democrats, they're like, oh, God, you want to take our guns. And we were like, I don't care if you have guns. You can have guns. We just don't have guns. It sounded like she said, it sounded like Toad said he had the guns. Um, in an area where people uh, are. Let's have a look. Uh, I'm gonna go now. Bye. She's such an and then. Uh, yeah. So. All right. Let's try this one. This is the last one, and then we're gonna we're gonna actually finish after this. This is our last clip. The point was, is I have a lot of neighbors that have guns that don't put up with shit. That's all I was saying. Like, if the protesters were out here. It wouldn't matter because, like, I have a lot of neighbors that have guns that don't put up with shit. Like, I'm not. That's just. They wouldn't tolerate it. Wowzers. I have nothing against guns. I, it was just a comment. We were talking about the protesters. I don't care about politics. If you want to be a Republican and love guns, go for it. If you want to be a Democrat and love gu guns, my point, again, is that you guys are perseverating on a topic I've discussed, and you're turning it into something that doesn't need to be. <laughs> I'm going to go now. Bye. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so are, like, all about, like. There you go. Like, like, like. Oh, boy, there you go. Well, thank you. If you've survived that, <laughs> uh, if, you ha if you've if you survived that, congratulations. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to end it, and I will catch you again tomorrow because I'm not working. Um, I'm going to go going to bed in normal. Oh, it's, oh, it's nearly 11 o'clock. Wow. All right. Been on for two and nearly two and a half hours. Wow. So thank you for all joining me. Um, and I will catch you again tomorrow. Have fun. Have a good day or night, whatever it is in your place. Make sure you hit the like button, a subscribe um, if you haven't subscribed already. I hate KJ, but for some reason I keep watching. Welcome to the club, Cal. That's us. <laughs> See you later.